on to uh, <coughs> agenda item 20. Um, change classification of Gray Wolf, uh, Chairman McBeth, um, for possible action. The commission will determine whether to pursue the change of classification of the Gray Wolf, Canis lupus, uh, from a game mammal to unprotected mammal. Um, and um, and then, so is this two? Do we have this broken into two? Is that how we're doing this? Uh, Excuse uh, me again. On this on agenda item twenty, is it is it twenty, and then twenty A, or is it is this all one just agenda item? It's one agenda item. One that would be two parts. Two parts to one agenda item. Okay, and so um, be, because the, I guess the background on on the uh, the flush language there uh, on on twenty is that the commission, um, the, uh, the prior commission had basically requested um, that th we pursue regulations to change from a game mammal to unprotected. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Okay, so we're basically going to decide whether we're going to do that. And then, in addition, we're going to do the first reading of commission policy number 27, protection of Nevada wildlife resources. Uh, that is the uh, commission will have a first reading for proposed changes to commission policy number 27. The commission may choose to retain policy 27, modify all or part of policy 21, or to eliminate policy 27 in its entirety. Okay, so um, with respect to that, um, the the issue of the wolf is obviously something that uh, uh, that everybody, uh, that all sportsmen uh, are very concerned about. Uh, um, you know, uh, the, the facts, as I understand it, is is that uh, the, the gray wolf was never indigenous to the state of Nevada, uh, with the possible exception of maybe a very small area up in the Jarbridge area. Is that, uh, is that correct? I think, in fact, uh, uh, Chief Gilbertson can probably come up and help here as well. There are uh, like four or five records historically where wolves were taken, uh, not northern Washoe, but the very northern northwestern corner of of um, uh, of Nevada uh, some in the Jaw Bridge area but like I said four or five historic there's been some anecdotal things that are written in the literature where a traveler from the east who probably was a drunk heard the howling wolves in the Humboldt River well we know what that was that but um, uh, some would say those were wolves and I would say there was coyotes but no one really knows so we don't really have never had a self-sustaining a pack in, in um, Nevada. I don't think we want a self-sustaining pack in Nevada, um, and we're actually working with the service now um, on not only primarily the um, Northwest uh, DPS for wolves, which they're currently trying to draw the line into Nevada, um, and we're uh, challenging their models because we don't think the prey-based model. model really does support the notion that there would be a self-sustaining pack here and we don't want to be part of that DPS. Um, so at this point our comment back to the services never had them, don't want them. Um, uh, so that's kind of where we're at at this point. And, and the discussions in the past, um, <clears throat> past commission meetings uh, have centered around um, from a strategic standpoint what is the best way uh, for the state uh, to deal with the wolf issue um, as far as the classification of the wolf. Um, should we have it as a gay, mam a gay mammal uh, or should it be unprotected? Um, and, uh, and just for some background, uh, we, we did have the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, speak to the commission uh, in the past and their, their statements to us um, very clearly, as I recall, were that uh, they felt that it would, it's better to keep uh, the um, uh, wolf uh, classified as a game mammal as opposed to uh, uh, classifying it as unprotected because it sends the wrong message um, you know to to the US Fish and Wildlife Service and to everybody else um, but at the same time we need to be very adamant about uh, the issue of the wolf and that we don't want it in the state of Nevada and so uh, but so 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 I guess the discussion I'm hoping the that we have with regard to this aspect of this agenda item is to say, okay, um, what is, you know, let's revisit that and is, is, is that the best way or should we change it to unprotected? Um, mm -hmm. I guess I'm still leaning, I haven't heard a good enough argument myself uh, to change it to unprotected. Um, 
And um, but I but I guess that that should be the discussion the commission has, and we get uh, any public input. But um, should relate to you. I had a, a personal discussion with the director of the Fish and Wildlife Service, um, and we discussed this topic at length. Um, his comment back to us is that remember the, the the gray wolf is an endangered species. Someone shoots a gray wolf in Nevada, whether it's transient or not, will be subject to the full um, exercise of their law enforcement. Um, I made that very clear. He also made it clear to me that uh, if you make it unprotected, you send the message to the public that it's okay to kill a wolf like it is a coyote, where it is not. Um, and the other thing is he said that they're really moving towards delisting and rapid, rapidly. He felt that the service services position, because he's the director, said that if you keep it as a game mammal, all your options are open because you can develop a management plan, a harvest program, et cetera. You make it unprotected, uh, the service will will manage wolves in, in Nevada if you ever got wolves in Nevada. So I took that as a pretty serious um, pretty serious direction from the guy that's going to make the final decision. So um, anyway, I'll relay, relay that back. I don't think we had, uh, we had this conversation at the OFWA meeting here um, in September. So take it for what it is. Okay. Um, so um, with that background, do you want to go ahead and break this agenda item up into two pieces and, and, and we have a discussion on the issue of uh, uh, gay mammal versus uh, unprotected, and then uh, move forward to the policy um, as a separate uh, subset of this uh, agenda item. I, I'd, I'd almost rather do that. It makes it, it, makes it simpler. So why don't I uh, uh, ask the commission uh, to comment uh, with regard to the first aspect, and that is uh, uh, leave it. And, and, and the background is is that at, uh, at a prior um, a prior point uh, in the past, we did vote to make the wolf a gay mammal. Uh, I can't remember how long ago well, that was, a couple years ago? Years. Five or six years? years. Wow. Okay. 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 Yeah, my memory is slipping. So anyway. Um, okay. Um, so, so with that history, let's... Uh, Go ahead, and um, I'll bring it uh, back to the commission, or I'll, I'll ask the commission to go ahead and comment on this uh, unprotected versus uh, gay mammal issue. Uh, Commissioner Howell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, we already voted this issue, and and uh, it was supposed to take effect in April last year. That didn't happen for a variety of reasons, and uh, I. I I guess the last part of it is that executive order is the reason it didn't happen. Now, with that said, uh, everybody got a copy of this coming from Suzanne, but I'd like to read it in the record. This came from the uh, Nevada Guides and Outfitters Association. And gre it says, greetings, I would first like to apologize that a member of the Nevada Outfitters and Guides Association is unable to attend the meeting of the State Wildlife Commission, and therefore uh, NOGA would like to bring to your attention the following matter via email. A concern of NOGA is the classification of the gray wolf. The directors of NOGA are in agreement that Nevada doesn't want the gray wolf, but are unsure of the classification of the gray wolf. A question that I have is, why is the gray wolf the only concern? At the, t at the time of determining the classification of the gray wolf, why not include all other species of wolves and classify them as well to save time so this will not need to be done again in the future? Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Henry Krenka, President, NOGA. Now, we discussed that very topic about including all wolves and I for the life of me I just don't remember when we passed the resolution whether we uh, actually said all wolves I know that topic came up and uh, I think we should change it exactly that any wolf all wolves 
if we're going to do something with it, we should make it all wolves. And uh, as far as uh, everything we do, we got to worry about the feds. I, I, I wrote I per wrote a personal letter, not a from a commissioner. I wrote a personal letter to the Nevada, I mean the uh, Congressional Sportsmen's Caucus, asking for them to consider doing the same thing they did with uh, Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Uh, they overturned that one ju judge's ruling about hunting wolves in those states. The Congressional Sportsman's Caucus did it. They put a bill in and they passed it. And I asked them to do the same thing for Nevada as a private citizen. And um, I, I think Geez, we just can't worry about what the feds are going to think every time we do something. I mean, this is this is a state issue, and uh, I, I think we should make all wolves unprotected species in Nevada. That's my position. I, I guess just simply in response, it's uh, it's not just a state issue. I mean, the, the feds have. Uh, uh, place the gray wolf on the endangered species list and uh, that makes it a federal issue so in the story uh, uh, okay any uh, any other comments uh, with regard to uh, changing unprotected wolves okay okay then uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and take this part of the uh, agenda item out to the public uh, any public comment uh, on uh, uh, dr. moldy <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Don Moldy, Reno. Uh, before I start, I just want to make clear that the Nevada Outfitters and Guides Association and the Department and the Commission do not speak for me regarding this issue. I like wolves. I want wolves. I would be extraordinarily happy to have wolves in this state. It would add immensely to the wilderness experience that people have when they hike about here to hear a wolf or see a wolf, and it's absolutely crazy to take this uh, rigid position that you appear to be forging for yourself on the basis of nothing other than an apparent prejudice against the animal. And since uh, all I hear is that and no facts, again, sort of reminds me of the red wolf, or the red uh, fox thing. I thought I would take a moment to educate you on some facts, if you care to hear them, <laughs> regarding the gray wolf. Let me start with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. A respected uh, conservative organization. Uh, this is their <clears throat> 2009 press release celebrating 25 years <coughs> worth of elk conservation efforts by this organization. Uh, the interesting thing about it is they pre prepared a table, which I have here, you can have, uh, <laughs> showing their successes, if you will, over 25 years, from 1984 to 2009. During that time, I'm just going to talk about Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Idaho picked up 5,000 elk, spe uh, elk uh, individuals during that 25 years. Wyoming picked up 25,000. Montana, 60,000. So there was a net gain, according to Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, during that 25-year period of 90,000 elk, a virtual elk explosion in those three states. <clears throat> and I would remind you, by the way, that the gray wolf was a part of this from at least the early 90s until 2009, where the wolf numbers during that time went from probably uh, two or 300 up to maybe 13 or 1400. I don't have the exact wolf numbers, but that's the best <clears throat> I can pull off the top of my head. So the, the Elk Foundation <clears throat> thinks we got a lot of elk. Uh, and you know what? So does, the <laughs> so does the Montana Fish and Game Department. I have here a 2007 story which they uh, printed in their own magazine. By the way, you might want to consider your own magazine. Theirs is called Montana Outdoors. And this is a fascinating story. It's called The Amazing Saga of Montana's Elk. And it's the history of elk in Montana going back decades. It's really f a fascinating reading. And <laughs> what's really fascinating on the last page is that the main problem when, from the point of view of the biologist who wrote this story, I assume it was a biologist, is that one of the ma main problems with elk that they were having in uh, late 2006 is that the elk were hanging around on private property. 
and were not accessible to being killed by hunters. And this they regarded as one of the biggest problems for elk in the state of Nevada, in the state of Montana. I, I'm not making this up. You can read this yourself. And this was such a problem, <clears throat> this difficulty getting at elk, that uh, Montana in 2006 artificial, uh, did an experiment with their hunting, elk hunting season where they eliminated the uh, early and late seasons, put everything in a five week period <clears throat> in order to basically kill as many elk as fast as they could and not let the elk get onto the fact that it was hunting season. That's why they did this, because they weren't killing enough elk. Montana Fish and Game thinks there are too many elk in Montana. I'm not making this up. This is their stuff. Now, I didn't want to leave deer out of this, so I went to my favorite spot, the Wyoming deer harvest thing. It's easy to find. I like looking at it. For the last 10 years, deer harvest in, by the way, could you put quotes around harvest when you type that? Uh, deer harvest in Wyoming is flat at 50,000 animals a year. It hasn't changed in 10 years. They kill the same number of deer every year. There's no wolf effect here. Apparently wolf don't care for deer in, in Wyoming, I guess. Uh, I don't know what it amounts to. The, the, but here's the fascinating thing. Uh, there's a sportsman in this room who shall remain unnamed who has been badgering me about why the Jackson moose herd is declining. My God, and, and he's right, it is. And his explanation has been, and probably still is today, although I haven't checked recently, is that wolves are to blame. Well, it turns out that's not the case. The Wyoming <coughs> Fish and Game Department uh, put out a nice summary of a five-year study they've done on, on the Jackson Moose Herd in Wyoming. This is uh, 2011, this is hot off the press, summer of this year called Why Are Moose Populations Declining? And what they found is what I've read elsewhere, which is that habitat in several ways has apparently impacted the Jackson moose population such that its numbers are declining. Predators make the list of this nine bullet points, but they're the last one down here. And although the potential effects of predation cannot be discounted, they're only a potential factor out of these other eight bullet points that talk about the decline of the Jackson moose population. And here's what interests me. I don't know if you know this, um, but moose are in, in many, in some ways, like bighorn sheep. Moose are, despite their size and their grandeur and their majesty, they are very sensitive biological animals to small changes in the environment. And one of the things they are most sensitive to is summertime temperatures. And if the summertime temperature, according to moose biologists, gets above 60 degrees or so, moose suffer. They not only suffer personally, but <clears throat> as the uh, climate change stuff goes on, they mate later in the year. The calves have less chance of uh, making it the next summer, blah, blah. And one of the reasons why it particularly affects the Jackson moose herd is because uh, some of you are old enough to remember these uh, huge Yellowstone fires that occurred in the late 80s. It was a national calamity. It was on the news every day during the summer. Well, those, ja those uh, fires in Yellowstone burned the subalpine habitat that moose depended on to get to not only for browse, but for shade and for temperature control because they have limited opportunity to control their body temperature. Those habitats were totally, well, I don't know if they're totally destroyed, but they were devastated by the Yellowstone fires and they have not recovered. And that probably more than any other single habitat factor accounts for why the Jackson mood herd, uh, moose herd has declined. Now, uh, I wanted to bring a little education here because I usually bitch and complain. So I'm quite happy to, and in three minutes, this is the best I could do. So uh, if, you, uh, if anybody wants to see any of this to make sure I'm not making things up, I'm happy to provide it. Or more if you want, because I send building stuff every day. He never reads it, but I send it to him. Thank you. Come on up. <laughs> Ken. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ken Wellington for the record, Elko County. 
And uh, Dr. Moldy obviously is on a roll since he won his first one in six years that, since I've been here with the Red Fox. But <laughs> Elko, Elko County has probably got the, uh, the biggest, uh, um, I guess, <coughs> investment in this issue right now because there have been sightings up there from legitimate people, from ranching industry, from uh, sportsmen, and from uh, Mr. Mason, Russ Mason, the, the past uh, game biologist, five to six years ago when he came to uh, Ely, and we had that meeting, and he talked about changing it to a game uh, mammal. We had the discussion. I personally talked to him, and he says, we've had two sightings in the Jarbidge wilderness. Uh, they haven't paired yet. And with this tool, by changing it to this game mammal, we'll be able to control that once they, we have an issue with killing of the of elk or, or deer or cattle or sheep or whatever it is that's up there. This gave the department the tool to be able to manage that. Therefore, at our meeting, we had some of the same discussions where you know changing this to a unprotected mammal could cause sportsmen to get into an issue. If they go out there, they're going to think, oh, gosh, I can shoot this just like I can a coyote. <coughs> And the problem is then we're going to have the feds right down our back, and they're going to be writing tickets, taking cars, taking rifles, uh, whatever you're using, they're going to be impounding you. And so that was a big uh, concern of ours. Uh, we as a board and the uh, uh, sportsmen that spoke at our meeting all agreed that we would like to keep this as a game mammal uh, so that the department can manage it at this point. Uh, Mr. Cranka Henry spoke at our meeting from the guides. And he did have concern and wanted all of the wolves listed as one to bring in here. And I don't know what that is. That's not on the agenda to be brought forth today. But I just wanted to uh, uh, let you know where we stood in Elko. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Got some cards. Gerald Lent. Mr. <coughs> Chairman and members of the commission, uh, I'm glad to see a set of presidents and allowed trapping public comments greater than 10 minutes and Don Moley went 10 minutes on his wolf presentation and I won't, I clocked it. And uh, I won't take 10 minutes, but I'm glad to see that, you know, you're giving us extended time. And uh, I wanted to comment about uh, a Utah story. And it, it says Utah wants to keep wolves out. And uh, I'm going to just read parts of it. Utah officials say they're worried by reports the federal government is about to classify Mexican gray wolves for protection in the southern part of the state. Uh, the um, Utah officials and lawmakers say they want wolves kept out and kept, or kept to a minimum in an effort to protect livestock and big game in Utah. Fish and wildlife officials are telling the state they will reclassify the Mexican wolf and grant it full protection wherever it roams and includes Utah in the recovery zone. And the governor, Governor Hubert of Utah, I'm talking about, disputes that the wolf's range, mostly in northern Mexico, ever extended into Utah. The only explanation they give, Governor Hubert wrote, is that Utah and Colorado have unoccupied wolf habitat and therefore must contribute to the recovery of the Mexican wolf just like Nevada. We've never had it here, and they're shoving it down our, these states, and they're going to shove down Nevada. Even if we say we've never had it, it doesn't make any difference to the feds. Uh, if we have a game animal in Nevada, we'll never have a season. Look at the bear. We had a, a, a few people from Incline Village, and if you try to get a season on a wolf, you're going to have the whole world after you. And they'll take it into court, like you get a judge like Malloy in Montana, and they'll stop a wolf so fast you can't believe it. Uh, the, and I want to read a little further on, on, a, on, a, on the newspaper article. In this effort to establish wolves in Utah is another example of the Interior Department promoting the agenda of the Defenders of Wildlife and other pro-wolf, pro-predator advocate groups. It's no secret that the Interior Department's U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Agency has close ties with Defender of Wildlife and with several other pro-predator groups. Jamie Rappaport, the current Defenders of Wildlife president and CEO, delineates her intentions for pony wolf reintroduction and doing it under the disguise of the ESA. She bolsters her credentials by promoting her previous position as a director for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Her intentions are clear. 
She intends to push her mandate to recover wolves throughout the continental U.S. As a current Defenders of Wildlife president, she is using her influence and her U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service affiliation to carry out their agenda. Utah is right. There should be no agreement to allow wolves and no agreement to establish a minimum population of wolves as a starting point. This tactic was used by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in their negotiating with Idaho Fish and Game and with Montana officials that allowed the establishment of an initial experimental population of the foothold. This has since escalated into a catastrophic, catastrophic, out of control wolf disaster. What possible redeeming attributes has Idaho and Montana received for their willingness to allow wolf introduction? Is it to watch our ungulate population resources be devastated, mutilated, and diminished to a point of no return? Is it to cause our citizens to be constantly afraid of venturing out into our state and federal wilderness out of fear of being attacked by wolves or out of fear of contracting the deadly wolf-borne disease? I think we know the answer to these questions. Um, the justification of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service used for reintroduction is a narrow, self-serving interpretation of the ESA, of which uh, it is a mo the ESA is the most corrupt and manipulated piece of legislation that has ever been passed by the federal government. One lesson that should be taken from this is that each state must protect and take all necessary legal and legislative precautions within its means to protect its own resources. One can only surmise that the Idaho fishing game, had they followed it, they might have had a, uh, a no wolf policy in there. The Utah governor and its legislature are right. Refuse wolves. Resist any effort by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to establish a minimum threshold in order to justify a minimum wolf population. Draw a line in the sand. No wolves, period. And when the director says, leave it to the Fish and Wildlife Service, the service will manage the wolves in Nevada, keep it as a game animal? Wow. Disaster. Absolutely not. Very dangerous because the antis are in bed with the Fish and Wildlife Service. And uh, we've got to protect Nevada. And you'll, if you make it a game animal, I, you'll never get a season. So you might, it's a kiss of death by making them a game animal. And you're going to get Mexican wolves or any kind of wolf for introduction. I don't care if we ever have them in the state or not. And if you look at policy 27, it, uh, number six, it says we've never had them in, in Nevada before. And just in closing here, just in case, Anyone ever wondered about what the size difference is between a, a coyote and a Canadian wolf? I'm going to show you what the difference is in a picture. I'm kind of scared. scared. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lent. Okay, any uh, further? Yes. We card? Mike Smith. And you were a few minutes shorter than Dr. Moldy if you're keeping time. <laughs> oh, I'll be short. I promise. For the record, Mike Smith, Reno. Um, I guess I'll hold <coughs> that. Um, I, uh, listening to uh, Secretary Mayor, uh, those were my concerns as well. You're dealing with an endangered species, whether you like it or not. Um, I think to stick the finger in the Fed's eye is short-sighted. Um, I think that uh, the, all the North American model states that you manage, whether you like the animal or not. And in this particular case, I think management of the wolf, where Endow makes the decisions, I disagree with Dr. Lyon. I don't think, I don't think the reason to, 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 uh, to reclass the wolf so you can't have a season on it, or it's going to be a hard fight. I don't think you would have near the fight that you, would, that you had with the bear. The bear is a separate, it's a separate animal, it's a separate predator. You know, you come in and show the public there's data that these wolves are doing these, uh, knocking down the deer herds, whatever they may be doing, if that did occur, you're not going to have an argument. You know, that, that's, that's solid game management, just like you don't hear arguments about the mountain lion or, or the bobcat or whatever. Um, I had one other thing I wanted to mention and I forgot. Getting old. <laughs> Joy. Uh, empty. Um, yeah, one, just on a lighter note, you know, right now, it's my understanding, I heard on the radio, that UNR is in a heated battle with Aubie the Tiger down in uh, Alabama for the mascot, the most popular mascot. 
So let's show the wolf, let's show a little Wolfie here <laughs> that, uh, that we're not going to just drop him in like a coyote or a scout. Thanks for your time. Okay. Paul Dixon. For the record, uh, Paul, Paul Dixon, Clark County Cab. <coughs> Again, although we did not discuss this item at our last cab meeting, we have had in previous cab meetings and, and is documented in our meeting minutes and, and action item reports extensive discussions about the wolf. Uh, I will say, just to summarize very quickly, all of the concerns and recommendations given by Director Mayor at the start of this is where we, we landed. And as uh, Mike Smith just said, it is an endangered, protected animal at this point. And the last thing we want to do, if we're worried about people not knowing what a morning dove is, or, or European, or Eurasian collared dove, not European, it could be European. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe French, you know. Um, if, if, if we can't trust people to do that, if we put an animal as unprotected, I guarantee you there are going to be people that said, well, you said it was unprotected. How was I supposed to know that it was endangered? And I think that we would set this commission and the Department of Wildlife up for lawsuits, to be honest with you, from people who would claim that you falsely led them into believing that they could harvest a wolf. So I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thanks. Mel Belding. We've got the cards. We'll go through the cards and then we'll pick anybody oh, else up. Oh, you say various. Well, I've raised my hand or anything. I filled out a card for you. I want to make sure you. I'd like to thank the first speaker because I'm going to go home tonight and see if it was the wolf that started the fire in the in the Yellowstone to see if they could get more moose. Uh, Mel Belding, Washoe County, for the record. Um, uh, with respect uh, to Mr. Mayor um, and 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 uh, Charlie Howell, also Commissioner Howell, Commissioner Howell I, I agree with Commissioner Howell that uh, this is a state's rights issue. I agree that it's time that we told the feds that uh, you know what, we'll go ahead and manage our own wildlife. It's ours to manage, and we do a damn good job with it here in Nevada. We'll go ahead and do it. Uh, Wyoming been a pretty good battle but it looks like they're finally going to get what they want and I was told that'll never happen but uh, they're going to get what they want and I'm, I'm glad they are that's a dual classification um, I read last night that uh, they're promising to have 1,000 wolves in, in, in Colorado in the next 10 years hope that doesn't happen either but that's what the I'll say the other side is uh, wanting I'm not going to take the 10 minutes that Dr. Moldy got her, <laughs> or uh, Mr. Lent, but I am going to make some, uh, some comments here. The Endangered Species Act, <clears throat> wow. Every time it's convenient, that other side uses it. You know, we keep, football is such a great game because the goal lines are still 100 yards apart. They don't change those goal lines. But we've seen the goal lines change. The game has changed. The rules how to get there has certainly changed. But I, I've never seen things change so much as this wolf. We're going to have 300 of them. We're going to have 30 breeding pairs. But now we have, they admit we have over 1,500, and it's not good enough. We need to put 1,000 in Colorado also. I've heard from one of the commissioners and someone in the audience, uh, God, if we tell these hunters in Nevada, we must be a bunch of dumb sticks because... If we tell them it's an unprotected mammal, we're going to go kill these things. We realize that it's still on the endangered species list. And they've been on the endangered species list in the state of Wyoming for many years, since the 90s. And they have been an unprotected species on the outside of the recovery area. And we haven't had a problem in Wyoming with some hunter going out there and whacking a, a wolf and having to go face the feds. I don't think it's going to happen here in Nevada either. Um, the Endangered Species Act, we use it when it's handy. We use it, you know, somebody's trying to tell me that a black bear in Nevada is, is, is an endangered species. And I, I look at that the same way I look at the wolf. Neither one of them are endangered. You know, they're calling a black bear an endangered species because it's an island of animals? That, come on, man. We, we can use this Endangered Species Act any way we want to. But let's get real. And we don't need the wolf here in Nevada. And I think in closing, um, we're going to negotiate. 
I don't think we need to negotiate with a third of a of a of a briefcase. I think we need to go with everything we have possible. And when the wolves do populate more in Nevada, because they are here, there's no doubt. Uh, when they do populate more, we need every means that we have at our ability to control that animal. And just putting a tag out there is not going not gonna to do it. We've seen that with Idaho and, White and Montana both. They want to go back to the table. They want the same deal that Wyoming's going to get. And uh, they want to, they, you know, Montana's already raised their tags 150% or something. Uh, Idaho wants to raise it even more. Um, for, you know, to, to force the Fish and Wildlife Service to, to make that decision, what did Idaho have to do? We heard from Dr. Lent what Utah wanted to, had to do, but what did, what did, what did I, let's think back, what did Idaho have to do? They got tough. They got tough with the feds, and they said, look, we're not spending any more of our state money, and we're not going to go investigate any more of these wolf killings. So maybe that's something we ought to look at, too. Thanks. Catherine Smith. Kathy Smith, Reno. Um, so according to the records I've looked at, actually, uh, I've seen different varying accounts, but the wolves were inhabitants of Nevada in the early 1900s. And I actually have a list by a U.S. Fish and Wildlife that gives actually the distribution of wolves in the United States. I don't really know how relevant that is to what I'm going to say, but although wolf reintroduction has been controversial, the effects in Yellowstone have seemed mostly positive. Um, Doug Smith, the leader of the National Park Service's Yellowstone Wolf, Wolf Project, says that, quote, with the wolf back in the place as the top carnivore, biodiversity is greater. The return of the wolf is the best <coughs> thing that can happen to Yellowstone, in, is the best thing to happen to Yellowstone in the past century, unquote. The number of coyotes has been cut in half. The aspen and willows, which make up only a small percentage in the park, have shown recovery, which increases biodiversity. Um, I personally have mixed feelings about wolves potentially returning to the state as residents. Um, on one hand, the wolf deserves their place in the ecosystem, even at the expense of hunter opportunity. Natural predators are much better at bal balancing an ecosystem than humans are. Uh, they take the weakest or most vulnerable and not the trophy, allowing for a much stronger gene pool. For example, the mean age of the adult elk cow killed by wolves in Yellowstone is 14. Um, sportsmen outside the park killed a female elk with a mean age of 6, which is in the reproductive prime. Uh, but on the other hand, it is also brutal when prey is reintroduced to a previously exploited predator. The prey has a definite learning curve. I did read some articles that do suggest, according to some studies by Joel Berger, um, who was at UNR, uh, on naive moose prey that at least some prey species do learn quickly. Um, I'm not really sure, like other people have commented, why delisting the wolf is even being discussed, given the wolf remains on the endangered species list in Nevada. Now, at the last commission meeting, we heard at <coughs> length about the American model. Uh, I was happy to hear the comments that you made at the beginning of this, because you specifically mentioned that species, that species on the endangered species list were accounted for in the model. Uh, Chairman McBeth said that it is the commissioner's fiduciary responsibility to protect and preserve those animals on the endangered species list by the statute from the legislature. I don't remember a predator exclusion clause. Um, lastly, how can you suggest that you can manage an animal when it's delisted in the state? And that's all. And I have um, some supporting material for any of the documentation. Well, uh, for the record, Tom Castanelli, Humboldt County. <clears throat> um, I'd like to take us all back to when this all started making uh, the wolf an unprotected animal. At that meeting, I got in front of you and I said, basically, this is a waste of time. Um, I am for the wolves being an unprotected animal. But on the first hand, we've got to um, de uh, get them off the endangered species list. There's no way they're going to be unprotected as long as they're on the um, 
Endangered Species Act and list. And at that point in time, the Fish and Wildlife Service sat at that meeting and threw us an olive branch right there at the meeting. He said, now's the time for the states to go out, for Nevada to go out and change the boundaries of wolf habitat. He, he sat there and said, this is not wolf, this is not the wolf's territory at that meeting. And I urged the board, the ex-commission, the past commission to go after that at that time and they pursued this um, change in the wolf status. In, and it's really not going to gain us anything. And it's still not going to gain us anything right now. I go, we need to be going after the, the area the wolves um, can be in. And um, we, should, we should have been doing that all along. And we'd be at a better point at this time. Instead, we've been chasing this unprotected making them an unprotected species. And I think it's just a waste of our time. I think we should go after what Ken's after and, and say, hey, this state is not wolf habitat and it never has been. And if we have to go through the governor or through the state, go, go those routes. But um, I'm also with these, the rest of the testimonies here, we've got to do something about it. We can't let this, we can't let the wolves come into this state. It would be a terrible thing for agriculture, for uh, our sportsmen, for our, uh, all our species that we have in this state right now. Thank you. Any other? Come on up. John Reed Washoe. Uh, Rex Flowers has insisted I speak on behalf of myself on this particular issue. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I don't want the wolves, wolves here in any way, shape, or form. I think they're magnificent animals, and if I want to see one, I'll go to Idaho. They're right there. It's not a long drive, and uh, Dr. Moldy, go on up there, I'll drive you. <laughs> Although you're not going to see them anyway. They're very elusive uh, in the daytime. But as I listen to the discussion, and, and it's all been very thoughtful, but it seems to me that the issue, the war is not against the wolf. The war for the Western states is against the feds. And we need to draw a line someplace. And this is the one where we have to do it. This is a state's rights issue. It's not just the feds have spoken and put it on the endangered species list. Uh, we fought the feds, uh, not we, when I'm meeting me particularly, but Nevadans and Elko, uh, 10,000 Shovel Brigade. We told Gloria Flora to put that issue where it belonged. I had the misfortune of sitting here uh, at Galena High School and listening to Gloria Flora, an Easterner, trying to tell us how to run the Great Basin. Uh, she did it in a, uh, she broke the law in several ways. She wouldn't allow the meeting to be recorded and stuff. And I think what we need to um, assert the Tenth Amendment, there's still a lot of unfinished law out there, both in terms of the Endangered Species Act, both in terms of what's listed. I'm not the guy, like the director, who's going to have to sit there with the guy that's heading the Fish and Wildlife Service. I'm sorry. But I think a confrontational way to go is the only way to go. We've got to get these people to quit trying to run our lives that were born and raised in Baltimore and Washington and New York City. Um, my other thought on delisting it is that if, first of all, you're not going to ever get a hunting season on this thing. I, I agree that this will be worse than the bear issue. And then the other issue there is that the people that are really going to be able to help with this issue and the people that are going to have to deal with this issue from day to day are the ranchers and the farmers. They're the ones that are going to be confronting these wolves uh, and being in a position to do something about it. I don't think your average hunter uh, had the opportunity to be very close to some wolves recently. We, uh, one of the guys in Idaho that we were with had a tag. We tried calling it in, and it was interested in other stuff. Uh, it's exhilarating. They're beautiful animals, but we sure don't need them here. Thank you. Thanks. Come on up, Corey. For the, Lytle, or for the record, Corey Lytle, Lincoln Cab. Uh, our cab voted in favor of the unprotected mammal, uh, basically because of the state's issue, uh, state wildlife issue, wildlife in the state belonging to the people. Uh, it, it is, it's, it's a tough, tough thing to do, but we think a line needs to be drawn at some point. Uh, we also realize that the Great Basin is a tough region, and we just don't <coughs> think that Nevada can physically support these wolves. Uh, we realize we don't have, we're, we're not a neighbor to it like Elko County or 
some of the other areas. But it, it's a tough issue. That's what we voted on. Um, off the record for myself, maybe we could teach uh, 50 breeding pair how to eat wild feral horses and turn them loose in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> Trish, come on up. Trish Swain, for the record, thank you. Um, I try to stick to just my one issue, which, believe me, is enough for me to deal with. But I cannot sit still when uh, the wolf is the topic because like Dr. Moldy, I just happen to be a strong advocate for the wolf. And I do not understand why the solution to every uh, concern is killing. I do not see why we cannot, as I was explaining before about the coyotes, consider these alternative methods which do work, which have been proven to work. And also I understand from uh, people who work with wolves that they are responsible for less than 1% of cattle deaths. They are not out there decimating cattle herds. And I will try very hard to find more supporting evidence for that argument. But I have heard that argument. I've also seen the video, uh, Lords of Nature, which Dr. Smith was talking about in terms of the environmental improvements that happened at Yellowstone when the wolf was reintroduced there. And I think that the apex predator definitely has a place in the chain of life and should not be eliminated. It's not a problem for us here now. Um, there, this is all a uh, slippery slope kind of reasoning. What happens if we're all of a sudden overrun by wolves, which I don't know what the likelihood of that would be. But I just want to put in my statement in support of the wolves, keeping them in the status that they have now and not making them unlisted. Thank you very much. Any uh, further public comment? Okay, seeing none, uh, then I'll bring it back to the commission for any comments uh, uh, relative to the uh, uh, portion of the agenda item that deals with uh, changing the classification of the gray wolf from a game mammal to unprotected mammal. Uh, Vice Chairman Rob. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Hank Bogart for the record. So the incrementalism of the wolf introduction in other states, there must be a little bit of credence to damages to wildlife and to livestock. Um, yeah, the, the Montana governor who finally stood up to the feds, Wyoming governor who stood up to the feds, and also the Idaho governor who stood up to the feds, they all did it in a reactive, defensive manner. I don't understand why Nevada, because it never was a huge habitat for wolves, can't be proactive. And, and whether we want to call it a uh, game animal or an unprotected species, you can't shoot it unless you get a season. You're not going to get a season. That's pretty obvious. So leaving it as unprotected, at least it puts U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service on notice that if they're going to come to the state of Nevada, and jerk us around, we have a rapport with our present governor. We have our own plan, just like we should be doing with the sage gum that I brought up much to my chagrin just before I got sick. Uh, we've got to be proactive. We've got to draw that line, and we've got to stand on that line and say, no, this is the state of Nevada, sovereign state of Nevada. This is a representative republic, because we're the democracy it would already be over, the anti-hunters, the anti-trappers. And so anybody that says only 1% of the livestock are taken by wolves, well, guess what? About the first thing documented killed in the state of Oregon when they crossed the river out of Joseph, Oregon, was domestic livestock, not weak little calves just being born, full-grown cows with their hind legs crushed and then eaten completely out while they were still alive. It's a pretty gruesome thing. Now they found wolf pups all the way to the Oregon coast in that thick timber. They'll never get rid of them. It's, a, it's something that we spent when we were actually a production, productive nation that were interested in producing our own food for our own people. Now we import all our oil. These kind of things are going to make us import all of our food. This is devastating to 
all of us, whether we're hunters or in agriculture, and if it's your 1% of your livelihood that is being destroyed by these animals, then it's a very devastating blow. And, and, and I say draw a line in the sand. We have a governor that is obviously very, very favorable to our organization, or at least in appearance. Uh, Mr. Mayor has a very good rapport with him, obviously. And we should draw the line in the sand. And when U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service shows up, and goes, ooh, these guys don't want them. Maybe we ought to sit down with them, draw the line on their border, and do something about it. But if we get a, a, a small population, then the biologists are going to show up, then the studies will show up, and then one of these days, we will know what the results of having wolves in the state of Nevada. I say they're no different to me than a Mormon cricket. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Hank. Um, Vice Chairman Rob. <coughs> I was on the commission the last time this subject, well, maybe not the last time, but when the became a game animal, Russ Mason brought many facts to us, and it was a long discussion, and, and the decision was made to make it a game animal so we could have a management plan, and in case a wolf did show up with a management plan, the Department of Wildlife has some discretion to take care of a problem wolf. Without a management plan, you, you call the feds and they have to come maybe take care of a problem. Uh, I've talked to other states uh, since this, I was been removed from this issue for a while. I wanted to see where everybody else was at. I heard some testimony at the uh, Washoe County meeting the other night, made me make some phone calls. I called Wyoming. Uh, talked to their public information officer who was pretty much their point man on this whole subject and said this is where we're at this is the discussion we're going to have where should we step and not step as Mel brought up there's a dual classification on wolves there uh, they have a uh, trophy game management area and they have them as unclassified because they have the trophy game management area they do have a plan, so they are able to go forward. They still can't hunt them. It's, they're working on that. Uh, but I asked why they had to do a classification. They're hoping one day the wolf becomes delisted. At the day it becomes delisted, then having it as an unprotected animal affords them to do some things. But as long as it's listed as a protected animal, have it unclassified gives them zero room to do anything. So at the present time, Nevada's best tactic, in my opinion, to be able to manage wolves or do anything if we do have problems, is to list it as a game animal, have a management plan, so we have some action that we can take. Without that, we're relying on the federal government to maybe do something, and I do not want to do that. It's brought up that we don't want to rely on the feds or have the feds dictate to us. They will, and if there is a problem, we can't administer that problem. We're, go we're hoping that they're going to take care of it. I'd rather rely on our people to take care of the problem. So that's, that's my opinion on this issue. Commissioner Howell. Um, I'd like a clarification from the, probably have to come from the DAG, I guess. Um, if, um, if we're able to make a motion on this, and I hope we are, it says in the uh, item 20, change the classification of gray wolf. Can I change that to say any wolf? Um, let me it's, take a stab at this, and then we'll get uh, maybe the director to speak to it. But I think in our classification, it's all been by, you know, the classification under genus, you know, in other words, canis lupus. Uh, and, and if uh, the Mexican wolf is a separate, you know, um, you know, classification, then we'd have to actually have it as a separate. Uh, right. uh, and so th that's the way that we have been classifying animals all along. And so I don't, I don't know if, you know, we could change it. Um, so, um, but, I mean, have there ever been Mexican wolves uh, in the state of Nevada? We don't believe so. Um, there is some debate about that with the service. I sat in a meeting with 
Utah and we were asked if we wanted to participate. I said, you bet. I was kind of sitting there listening to the discussion. Uh, they would like to make that line come over into, in, into um, uh, Nevada. If we get Mexican wolves, um, and that's one of the things I'm concerned about with these domestic wolves. They get out and a pair gets breeding, they get classified as a Mexican wolf fairly easy. And, then, and they're never going to, I mean, they're not going to delist the Mexican wolf, I just guarantee you. Just, I mean, not in our lifetime or our kids' lifetime. Um, uh, we would argue that there, there are no records of Mexican wolves because we're so dry. We're a different kind of country than, than what that southern Utah stuff is. So um, that, that's the posture that we've taken. And I said, we don't want to be part of the DPS. Um, to, so to, to, to go back to that, is that... Actually, uh, I, I never did get clarification on my question, wh whether it was a yes or no. I, I would say no, because I, I think we need to list them separately. Okay. Uh, but is there, then the uh, question can becomes... Can I add a ca caveat to the uh, motion then? Well, we don't have a motion, do we? Huh? Uh, yeah. When there's when the time comes, mm -hmm. if uh, in other words, if uh, we because we already have gray wolf listed as a game animal, if we change the cl classification of gray wolf to unprotected species, and the caveat would be and all other variations of wolf, that's that'd be okay, wouldn't it? Uh, I, I think that the format and the way that we have always classified animals is to list them by their genus, genus species, genus species. and, if and it's so species, it's and it's but so it's if it is separate and it is isn't the Mexican it has a different genus species. So we would have to we we would have to list the Mexican wolf as a separate species. In, in the regulation. We'd actually have to pass a separate regulation. So I couldn't put that caveat. I don't in. think so. Okay. All right. But if you're going to change what, your policy, it, you could have changed it in the policy. Yeah. And then, which would drive the regulation. Yeah. When it comes time, <clears throat> after all the discussion, uh, I just want to remind everybody that we've listened to the cabs like we're supposed to. The new new world or new new day or whatever it was that we accomplished here a few months ago um, and where they're at on it when we vote on this okay commissioner rain all right I just probably know where I'm at on this I mean I'm in the uh, relatively in the camp with though mr. Reed mr. building the you know there's some things that you just don't bend in on, you don't fold, you don't make a deal, you do what's right. It's a state, some things are states' rights issues, 10th Amendment issues, this is undoubtedly one of them. Now, and as far as the wolf, you need every tool in the toolbox to control them if and when a population is there, and that, and the main tool of all of them would involve trapping. That's the way to control a wolf. A guy with a rifle is not a way to control a wolf. Practically, it just isn't going to happen. So, you know, and we have three options as far as classification in the state of Nevada. Basically, one, we don't classify them. We have big game, and then we have fur bearer. At least with a fur bearer, you'd have all the tools and toolbox available with you. You'd have a general season. They don't generally have limits like you do. You, uh, no license or uh, tag requirements, excuse me, there's license requirement, but not tag requirements like there are with the others. That would at least allow us to do something if you, if politically you just plain can't handle unclassified. Okay, what about fur bearer? That's a classification, it's a reasonable classification, and it would allow the other tool to be utilized. Uh, two tools to be utilized, one being you don't need a tag, you need just a classification limits, um, and you put your you put your controls on it that way with the maybe maximum take and all that, and you get to use a trap. That's what the livestock industry would need, really need. 
is a trap. So, I mean, you know, we need to have it, I mean, unprotected, or at the very worst, if we can't hack that because, you know, then please consider as an alternative the Berber as a possible option. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? We do. Oh, sorry. Mr. <laughs> Chairman. You bet. Go ahead. I have a folder of information on the gray wolf and other wolves. I have friends that have encountered the problem of the wolf. I have a friend in Michigan who has a farm, and he's in Las Vegas now waiting for me to come back and tell him what's going on here. Uh, the wolves that was forced on Michigan have decimated the deer herds. They're working on the cattle. He has a constant fight on his farm because if he shoots a wolf, he's in danger of the feds coming out there and coming after him. I can't think of any good reason to sport the gray wolf as a, as a game mammal. And in good faith, I can't do that. I think we should have it as an unprotected mammal and go ahead and fight the feds. It's a state's rights issue. And just like uh, Commissioner Vogel said, we, somewhere you have to go ahead and draw a line. It's just like any other predator. It's just like, it's just like a, a coyote, for that matter. And I hear this talk about you have to have an alternate method of dealing with a, uh, a coyote and a humane treatment. And all. This alternate method, method to me is just getting a different caliber of ammo. <laughs> OK, thank you. Mr. Lynch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there was a comment made earlier uh, about Dr. Berger. Um, I was actually going to school here while he was doing his work. Um, I'm familiar with the Yellowstone work that he did. And uh, um, it was an interesting, if you guys haven't read up on it, I would um, suggest everybody go read up on it. It's kind of an interesting study. And it had to do with the, uh, um, I'm going to bring this up because it's, uh, it, it's a conversation that's in my mind, very valid, but we're so polarized that I don't think anybody wants to go to the middle to look at it. And th that's the problem with these studies and information. Everybody's, everybody's either in one camp or the other already. It's going to be very difficult for people to come in and talk about the role of predators and ecosystems and things like that. Basically, what happened was, it was a, they had lost a, a neotropical migrants, uh, which are songbirds, had come in and the, the, the numbers had plummeted. Uh, to, to practically zero in the Yellowstone uh, area. And uh, so they started to do, um, do their studies, you know, start killing things that eat eggs and nests and start killing parasitic uh, egg layers like cowbirds. I mean, you start, you know, and instead, of, instead of checking the battery to see what's wrong with your car, they start replacing engines, you know, to, to, to solve the problem. Long, long, long story short was it was in relation to the removal of the of the predators, of the wolves, the, the loss of the wolves in the ecosystem, uh, increased number of elk, increased impact and increased pressure on young quaking aspens and repairing area uh, vegetation. Uh, every, every critter that likes to eat willow, um, willows and young aspen and stuff, that's pretty good stuff when you're, when you're an animal like an elk. Um, and basically it did away with the whole habitat scheme that, that created many other problems. When they reintroduced the uh, wolves to the area, balance was restored with regards to songbirds. So here you have wolves impacting songbirds. And things are that dynamic and that sophisticated out in nature. And it's a, con it's a difficult conversation to have in situations like this. Personally, I think that we need to stick with the game. I, I'm not up for a fight with the feds on this. We've had successful conversations with them in the past when Steve Thompson was uh, the director for the region out of Sacramento where Ken was able to go down and talk to him. Steve's very familiar with Nevada. I think he's gone, been long gone. Um, but you can't give up on those relationships. When Steve was there, this situation was stable. It was very stable. It was a trusted person um, with the relationships. And I, I think that you got to continue to build those. We don't have the resources. We don't have the money. And I understand, I understand standing up. We've gone this fight with states' rights. Everybody that remembers the New Mexico guide thing where we got sued for violations of interstate commerce, our legislative, uh, our, our congressmen and our, our senators stepped up and they reaffirmed states' rights to manage wildlife. I get all that. Um, 
I just don't look at it as now's the time to, to be picking a fight over over this particular issue. I'll, I'm, I would support something along the lines of game animal at this point in time until we can have other discussions. Now, Vice Chairman Rob. I have one clarifying point because it's been brought up during the discussion with the audience. Uh, classifying a game animal, we'd all be kidding ourselves if we ever thought we'd have a wolf hunt in the state of Nevada. The only reason I want that is to give the tool in the toolbox to our department, not rely on the feds. Uh, it, it, we're not going down that path of condoning a hunt or even asking for a hunt or going that direction. We classify them just to get the management plan so we can deal with them. Okay, and I, uh, I'm not going to uh, reiterate. I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, you know keeping it as a game mammal. Uh, for the reasons that have been stated, um, but um, I want to make sure everybody understands that uh, that when it comes to the issue of the uh, DPS, the designated uh, population segment, that uh, we need to do everything. In other words, the stand that we need to take is that issue. Uh, as uh, I, I just don't, I don't think that marginally changing it from gay mammal to unprotected is 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 going to make any difference i think where we need to fight the battle is is that uh, wolves were never in nevada uh, as uh, any kind of we just didn't have the prey base i mean it was you know uh, it seemed pretty obvious that uh, that uh, we didn't have the prey and so we, we we didn't have the wolves and so i think that's the battle we need to make uh, to fight and and i uh, would hope that uh, the department fights that very vigorously because uh, that's that's where we need to do it um so Anyway, that's uh, that's where I'm leaning, um, uh, Commissioner Drew. Yeah, a question, and then maybe a, a question for the cabs that are here. But um, first of all, I agree with uh, what Chairman Macbeth and Vice Chairman uh, Rob have said. I just don't see how changing the status provides us any leverage with the feds. In fact, I think there's a high probability that it could lose us some leverage. Um, and I'm all for drawing a line in the sand, but I don't know that this is really drawing a line in the sand, to be honest with you. I think there's better ways about it. Uh, the question I had uh, made for some clarification from the CABS, because some of the action reports uh, were a little mixed, because I know there's two parts to this agenda item. If you're here from a CAB, could I ask, uh, just for clarity, which CABS support it as a game animal and which one as a non Game animal. I think I've got clarity on a couple of them, but could we could we do that just so we're clear sure. on where the cabs? Shake so why don't we just have a roll call of the uh, cabs? Uh, uh, indicate game mammal or unprotected. Elko County game mammal. Clark County and past meetings game animal. <coughs> Wilshire County unprotected. Carson game mammal. Eureka County game mammal. Mineral County game. Lyon County game. Okay. Have you discussed it in the past? No. Okay. Okay. So is that? Uh, yep. That's what you needed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I guess at this point. Um, oh, go ahead, uh, Commissioner uh, Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just wanted to. I'm really right in the center on this, and it's really a hard decision to go one way or the other. Um, quite frankly, I don't see why unclassifying it, I don't see how that gains us any leverage. I, I think right now if we're working on this and it looks like we can have it not listed in Nevada, I would like to see that. But if it becomes listed in Nevada, what's the difference between when they do that, we well, go back and unclassify it, as to doing it right now, I don't see where drawing the line in the sand right now. I, I, I think we're going to get what we're going to get, and then we, then we pick the battle. But <coughs> I, I having a hard time with it. I mean, I'm going, I'm, I'm leaning towards following what the county advisory boards are are, are going. But I don't want to see them in Nevada. I don't think they've ever been here in numbers. But I don't see how unclassifying them gives us any more options than leaving them as the game animal that they're classified now. Okay. Well, um, 
I guess the way this could go is that um, the status quo right now is that they are classified as a game mammal, so we could either have no motion on this particular issue or, uh, I guess, if somebody wants to change it, uh, uh, to see if uh, the commission has any uh, st stomach to change it to an unprotected mammal, they'd have to make that motion. And so uh, um, I, uh, that's what I'm looking at right now. So uh, we either do nothing or uh, somebody stands up, make a motion, and we'll see what happens. Uh, Vice Chairman Rob? I need some clarification on something because I wasn't at the meeting. You said you guys have taken a vote to make it an unprotected animal, but because of the governor's order, that couldn't go forward. It, it never it never happened. We voted on it. We already passed it. It was supposed to happen the 1st of April last year, and uh, it never happened. My question is, if a prior body has taken a vote on something, when the governor's order ends, can a prior vote go forward? Is that vote null and void right now because of the governor's order, or is it still an active vote that when the governor's order is lifted can go forward? That's my concern right now is if we do nothing today, a prior vote when the governor's order is listed could have standing and go forward. I, we, I did good when I get two attorneys to go like that. <laughs> 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 I'm just a yeah, dumb old biologist. I think it is. Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, I, we, I, we'll have some clarification because. Uh, <coughs> Chair, Vice Chairman Rob. Uh, for the record, Larry Gilbert's in the Department of Wildlife. The vote was to bring the NAC forward to be, consi to be considered and acted upon. And in preparation of that, I did take the NAC and made two versions, one with the wolf as big, as big game and one with the wolf as unprotected. And we were going to bring that forward. That was the vote, to bring it forward to have it acted upon. But that was never brought forward or acted upon. The actual wording in the NACs. Okay. So and another clarification, if I could, if I could maybe help out. It's my understanding, and perhaps you'd, uh, you know, like weigh in this the deg is that you know what, what we're voting on. If we vote on something today, is not official unless we just uh, kill it. I mean, if we voted out, oh, let's make it an unprotected species. Well, we still need to bring it up with the re actual regulation in place and then vote on it. So this vote wouldn't even be final. We voted, if that was the vote, everybody, yes, we want it unprotected. Well, hold on, that ain't it. We got to have the exact regulation. It's a vote to bring that regulation forward. That's all that vote would be. Is that where I'm at? OK. And that's what happened a year ago, was a similar thing. We did the vote to bring it forward later. Yeah. So. So your options are do nothing, which it, we do nothing, or direct staff to promulgate an NAC proposal for your consideration with a couple options. Okay, so do you understand? One other so point is everybody keeps worrying about the feds and the Department of Interior. They have a boss also, and that's Congress. And it would seem to me like the, if we were to make this an unprotected species and wrote a letter to Congress, tell them what we did, address it to the Congressional Sportsman's Caucus, and here, this is what we did, this is what the way we want it in Nevada. We do not want it on the endangered species list in Nevada, so delist it for Nevada, please. Thank you very much. Okay. You ready for a motion? I'm ready for something to happen. Okay. <laughs> Either somebody tell me to move on to the, to the policy or, or to lunch or to uh, make a motion. Yes. I move that we change the classification of gray wolf to unprotected species. You got a motion? That's a motion. We have a motion uh, by Commissioner Howe. We have a second by uh, Commissioner Schrum. Uh, any further discussion on the uh, motion? 
Okay, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? Aye. Nay. Aye. Okay, and so let's uh, let's have a roll call. I believe we had uh, uh, Commissioner Shrum, Commissioner Howell, Commissioner Rain, and Commissioner Vogler uh, voting a yes, and that we had Commissioners McNinch, Rob, Macbeth, uh, Drew, and Wallace voting no. Motion fails five to four. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Did did you vote? Yeah. Mr. Wall, oh, I didn't see your hand go up. Sorry. Okay. Um, is lunch here? Yep. It is here? Okay. Um, um, I, I just have one question. I, I, I guess um, it's pretty contentious, this whole wolf debate, but... I guess my question is this, if it's been five or six years since we've had this discussion, and I'm the one who brought it up to, to get it, to make it, put it on the table, I'm the one who brought it up to Mr. Uh, Mayor and, and uh, Russ Mason. And uh, I asked then, I said, why don't we have a wolf plan? Well, my question is, why don't we have one now? It's been six years. Where is the wolf plan? I don't know. It's been five, six years. I mean, I know, I know government works slow, but man, six years, we don't have it. <laughs> anyway, we got to okay. see something. We got to see something. Okay. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and uh, um, uh, break for a half hour uh, to have lunch, and so we'll reconvene uh, at uh, uh, quarter to one. And we'll call Hank back. Here you go.